In this video, I'd like to give a brief review of the hydrogen atom so far and use that to motivate the need to refine this model to take into account the experimental observation uh, that the spectrum of hydrogen doesn't fully agree with the spectrum given by our original model. So the hydrogen atom was originally described as uh, an electron somewhat orbiting a proton. And the only energy terms that were taken into account were the kinetic energy of the electron, roughly. Uh, this should be the reduced mass, but it's about equal to the electron mass and a Coulomb interaction term between the electron and the proton. Solving the Schrodinger equation uh, for this Hamiltonian, we get the a general solution given by this. So the wave functions have a radial dependence uh, the, for which we're using R as the variable. It has, and it has an angular dependence given by the spherical harmonics over here. To fully describe the state of uh, the electron and the hydrogen atom, we need three quantum numbers, n, l, and ml. n is a principal quantum number and it can take on any integer value, one, two, three, and so on. l denotes the orbital angular momentum of the electron, and it's sometimes called the azimuthal quantum number. And this can vary from zero to n minus one, where n is this principal quantum number. And the third quantum number that we need is uh, sometimes called the magnetic quantum number. And it's the projection of the angular momentum onto the set axis. This A naught is the Bohr radius, and it gives the characteristic length of the hydrogen atom. In particular, it gives the most likely uh, radial distance at which you'll find the electron in the, in the ground state. For uh, higher energy uh, orbits, the radii, semi-classically speaking, uh, scale with the Bohr radius as the, with the square of the principal quantum number. So the, the resulting spectrum of this Hamiltonian looks something like this. The allowed energies scale as one over n squared. For the ground state, you have the famous 13.6 uh, electron volts as the energy. And the curious thing about this spectrum is in spite of the fact that you have two additional uh, quantum numbers, the energy only depends on the principal quantum number. And this results in a huge degeneracy of the energy levels that scales as n squared. And so for example, for the n equals two uh, levels, you have four, fourfold degeneracy. For the n equals three level, you have ninefold degeneracy and so on. Uh, and this degeneracy has to do with the values that the quantum numbers can take. For example, for the n equals two, l equals one level, you can have three different magnetic quantum numbers. You can have minus one, zero, and one. So you have uh, three configurations from the orbital angular momentum. Uh, and then one configuration over here uh, which would be ML equals to zero. So you have one uh, degeneracy of one, so no, no, no degeneracy over here and uh, a degeneracy of uh, three over here resulting in a fourfold degeneracy. Now for uh, this roughly gets this, the energy levels correct but if you perform more accurate experiments, you notice both a quantitative and a qualitative discrepancy between the spectrum predicted by the Schrodinger equation for this Hamiltonian and what's actually observed. In particular, 
all of the energy levels are a little bit lower than what's predicted. Uh, some of the degeneracy is lifted. So uh, in particular for energy levels with angular momentum, so when L is not equal to zero, the energy levels appear as doublets. So you would see them as two spectral lines experimentally. Uh, so that suggests that the, the spectrum of the hydrogen atom is in the less degenerate as our solution to the Schrodinger equation would have led us to believe. And to get a sense of the scale of the energy corrections, to, uh, to see if the tools we've developed for, with perturbation theory are applicable to this type of problem, we can consider just the first two energy levels. Uh, for the spectrum of our unperturbed Hamiltonian, the difference between the n equals one and n equals two level is on the scale of 10 electron volts. If you look at the discrepancies between the experimentally observed values and those theoretically predicted, they are several orders of magnitude smaller than the difference between N1 and N2. So this suggests to us that whatever contributions we've missed in our original Hamiltonian, they will be perturbatively small and we can use the tools we've developed perturbation theory to uh, address these discrepancies. So in the next video, we'll continue setting the stage for uh, the fine structure of hydrogen, which is these uh, fine differences in the energy levels observed and uh, introduce a very important constant that appears in atomic physics, the fine structure constant, and begin to look at the effects that were missed in our original interpretation of, of the hydrogen atom.